Thank you. Thank you. So, first of all, welcome. Good morning, buenos dias. It's a great pleasure to be here today. I've been waiting for this day for a long time, so I'm super excited to be here with all of you. Now, my name is Juan, and I work like a software engineer in the trust and safety team at Bitly. However, today I won't talk about trust, nor safety, nor Bitly. Instead, I want to talk about some tiny and cute experiment that I did, which, among other things, is going to explain why baking Vernon Sundex makes me happy. So, I've been using a mood tracking app for over a thousand days. That's a little bit more than three years. And it started, as you may know, you go to the App Store, you see some new exciting app, you click on it, and you start to play around with it. However, this one became more than that. It became a little bit more special. Because those five to 10 seconds that I spend every day to enter my mood became some sort of my daily meditation. And you know what I'm talking about. That time when you close your eyes, you look at the ceiling, and you ask yourself, how am I feeling today? And this is the app I'm using. It's called Dailyo, and no, I do not work for them. And every night at 7 and 9 p.m. local time, it asks me, it sends me a notification asking, how are you feeling today? When I click on it, it shows me this nice screen that we see here. And here we have five faces, ranging from extremely happy or rad to awfully sad. And of course, you enter your mood, click, and then it's going to ask you, what have you been up to? What have you been doing today? And by default, it has around 20 to 15 activities, but of course, you're able to add your own activities. And I'm going to show you some of mine later. Well, not later. Let's do it now. Yeah. <laughs> so this experiment covered 1,017 days. I started on January 4, 2019, New Year's resolution, right? And, I, and this experiment here is stopped on October 19, 2021. Why did I stop? Two reasons. First, I had to gather the data, to analyze the data. Of course, and also around this time, I was having some sort of existential, existential crisis, and I thought of leaving Germany, where I was living before, and moving to Austin, Texas, where I'm living now. So that I wanted to somehow have some sort of before Germany analysis, so I could later do an after Germany analysis, and maybe I'll present it next year. Who knows? So in this time, I have locked my mood 1,031 times. And at first, I wanted to do it actually twice a day, but I realized, like, no, one, come on, that, that, this is way too much. So I just stopped after the first week. And these are the mood frequency on the first chart that I'll be showing. And here we have all the moods, starting from good, which is the fourth best, rad, meh, and bad. And we can see that mood is the top one with 61%, followed by rad, meaning that I have felt quite good in 80% of my days. That we have meh with 19 and bad with 1. However, awful is missing here, and that's because fortunately so far, so far I have never had to resolve to that awful mood. So I've been, I'm quite a happy guy, I would say. <laughs> this is the login time. As I mentioned earlier, the app notifies me at 7 and 9 p.m., and the median is around 9 p.m., with some small exception that I'm going to cover later. Now, in this time, I have reported 44 unique activities, and these are the frequency count. You don't have to focus on all of them. I'm going to explain some of the most important one. And there's one with a bad word, but I mean, we are humans, right? <laughs> so the first one is friends. And I want to focus on friends, because usually when I enter my activity, what I'm actually entering that night is the highlight of my day. And if I'm with friends, chances are that this is going to be the highlight of my day. Then we have Ariel. And no, that's not the Little Mermaid. That's actually my ex. And we spent around four years together, so of course her name is going to show, uh, to pop out many times here during the conference, during the presentation, sorry, Jesus. So then, yeah, oh God. <laughs> Video. Then we have other cool activities like writing, exploding, coding, got meal, Netflix, uh, lockdown COVID-19, Pokemon, which refers to uh, Pokemon related activities. I'm a huge fan of Pokemon, as you can see my Pikachu tattoos. And others like hiking Formula One, which refers to either watch a Formula One race or just be in their life, something that I've been doing for the last two years. It's quite cool and quite expensive. Now, this is the average mood score when the activity is present, starting from the worst one to the best one. And I want to focus on the bad one for now. So we have lockdown COVID-19. And to give you some tiny context, when COVID happened, it started, I was backpacking through Asia and New Zealand which sounds cool, but of course, at some point, I was stuck in New Zealand for like four months. Then Ariel, she went back to Germany. I'm not German, so I couldn't go with her, so I was quite sad and angry, you know, because I was just sitting there unemployed, just waiting for some miracle, which came maybe after four months. Then we have napping, 
And it's not that napping makes me sad. It's just that I usually nap when I'm feeling sick, and sick makes me sad. So there's some kind of correlation there. Then we have others like flying, because I don't like flying. I mean, being sitting on an airplane sucks. It's awful. And then, can I say the word? Yeah, yeah and then we have fucking Mac. What happened? So that happened when this computer decided to stop working two weeks before I had to deliver the draft of my book. So I was very angry, and it was in New Zealand, so I had to go to, to go to Auckland, and they told me, we don't have the piece, we need to send the computer to Australia, to Sydney, and I was like, Jesus Lord, what about my book, you know? But anyway, everything worked. And then we have others like friends, of course, uh, it's quite high here, the average mood, because friends makes me happy. Also baking before 0.0. Now for the standard deviation. And the one, of course, we have the standard deviation of the mood when an activity is present. And we have that baking is the first one with a very low standard deviation. But we know that baking is 4.0. So you know it makes me happy. So we can see that baking indeed makes me always happy. It's not rad, it's just happy, just good. So then we have others very cool like friends. The standard deviation is quite high I would say. But usually friends is here. So I would say that it's either good or rad. And then we have Ariel, and this is like a very interesting one, or maybe the highlight of this one. And, I mean, you know, when you're in a relationship, you have your normal days, you know, where you just watch Netflix or just cook something. Then you have your rat days, where you are doing something very cool, you're traveling, you're fulfilling a dream. And then, of course, you have your meh days, where maybe, unfortunately, you have some sort of disagreement or discussion. And that's why there's a whole range of emotions right here, and we can see it with the large standard deviation. Now, here I'm just like cherry picking some of the uh, activities that I like the most and how they influence the average mood when the activity is present. So we have that lockdown, it kind of decreased one whole mood from zero to minus 1.0. Again, napping and sick, which I mentioned earlier. Then we have bleeping Mac. And then we have others that make me happy, like writing, gaming, F1, friends, Pokemon, and exploring. But now let's move on, and let's talk a bit about combinations and correlation. So I didn't enter any activity in 31% of the days. Why? Maybe there wasn't any highlight on that day, or I just wasn't feeling like it. Then in 31%, I enter one, and in 38%, I enter more than one. And these are the top. First, we have a good meal and friends, because I believe there's nothing better than having a good meal with your friends. Maybe we'll do that tonight. Then we have writing, reading, friends drinking, traveling, exploring, friends, and aerial. But then I want to look at this. This is the correlation, oh, sorry, a correlation pyramid. And don't focus on them. Don't focus on this tiny color. Let's focus on this. These are the top or the highlights from here. And we have that the highest correlation is in photography and exploring. With exploring, I mean going to a new city, new country, new forest, and just walking around. And usually when I'm doing that, I have my camera with me, like I did yesterday, like I have today my camera in my backpack. So for me, there's one of the best things is going to a new place with my camera and doing those things. And that's why the correlation is 0 0.46, the highest one of all, of all the activities. Now the lowest is friends and writing. Because if I'm with friends, maybe I'm not writing. And if I'm writing, it's because I want to ignore my friends on that day. And that's why the correlation is negative 0.16. Not for my favorite ones. We have F1 and bouldering. So when I was in Germany, for some reason, I used to enjoy doing bouldering on Sundays. Maybe because it's empty, because, I don't know, Sunday was the day. But of course, if you are a Formula One fan, then you know that the races or the Grand Prix, they take place on Sunday. So there's some quite a very nice correlation here. But there's something else that I, li that I like to do after bouldering and while watching Formula One, and that's baking. So I can have some fresh bread for the week. And since we already know that baking makes me happy and the Formula One race takes place on Sunday, then we can somehow assume that baking bread on Sunday makes me happy. And that's the punchline. Yeah. Now for the next one, let me boop. Time series, right? And here what I want to show is the how my mood has evolved over time. And also I want to highlight the daily, weekly, and yearly seasonality. And this is how my data set looks like. It only has like two columns. And the first one is the timestamp of when I enter my mood. And then the Y column is the, the mood itself, that, which is a number from 1 to 5. And this is the, the trend. We can see that it started quite high, 
Christmas season, I was in Puerto Rico, which I love being there, 4.2, very nice. Then it sort of went down a tiny bit, but I mean, it's still okay, 4.0 is still good. But then what happened here? COVID. Again, my computer stopped working, I was in New Zealand, I was alone, no idea what to do, unemployed, you know, just, just sadness was running through my heart, you know, and that was literally the lowest point of my life, I'm willing to say. I'm being so dramatic, I know, but it's fine. <laughs> But then, of course, things went better. I was able to enter Germany after a long time waiting, and then it went back to normality. And yeah, it's all good now. I'm happy today. So <laughs> now for the weekly seasonality. It's quite OK. There's nothing that great here besides that, well, Sundays, once again, is the highest point of the week. You already know why. And maybe Thursday evening, because as a good Puerto Rican, we love going out on Thursday. This day sucks. Friday sucks. Thursday is where is it? Thursday, you know, the day you go out, you listen to your bad bunny, you call your friends. It's the best day ever, Thursday. Then there's your seasonality. It's quite okay. There's just, I mean, the difference is not that big, except maybe here. I love the fall season. I mean, fall in the northern hemisphere. And because, I don't know, Starbucks, pump, pumpkin spice latte, the trees start to get yellow and orange, my birthday is, is in October, so a lot of good things happen here. I don't really, I don't really know why, I like to go out, travel, new Pokemon games, they come out on, on November, so best time of the year, you know, and also I'm getting ready to go to Puerto Rico, which I usually do for Christmas season. Now for the daily, and this is a cool one, we can see that for some reason, the mood is higher in the mornings. Why is that? Well, suppose, we are going out tonight, as we are doing, right? So we're having a good time. We'll be talking, chatting, sharing stories, and whatnot. However, at some point, my app is going to tell me, yo, it's time, your, your mood. But I'll be like, no, I'll do it tomorrow morning. That's the catch, right? So when I click the notification, which I'll do tomorrow morning, the date is still going to be yesterday's date, because the notification was from yesterday. However, the time the app shows is the current time. Of course, you're able to change it, but I never do, because I think that's cheating. So in other words, I'm logging yesterday's mood using today's time. And that's why it's usually highest in the morning because, again, if I didn't use my phone the last night because I was doing something very, very fun. Now for the moods. Let's go back to it. And here we have like a nice table with all the counts and everything. But I want to include the longest trick here. And in red, we have 14 days. I believe that was during Puerto Rico. Good 24 days. And I was like, wow, 24 days is quite a lot, man. So I went back to my map, pictures, you know, notes. I'm always logging a lot of data, random stuff. Yeah, my friends tell me I'm crazy. And I realized that on this day, at least in Germany, McDonald's decided to release the special edition Pokemon cards. And I was like, huh, I want all of them, you know? And apparently it took me 24 days to collect all of them. So I ate a lot of McDonald's on those days. To be honest, one day I got like seven Happy Meals, you know? I call my friends and I just come here, why? Mac McDonald's party, what? Because I have seven Happy Meals. I don't like fries, so I have fries. And they also give you now apples in the Happy Meals, like apples and some kind of ice cream. So I was just like, guys, just come over. So I did it for 24 days and I got all of them, by the way, yes. Then we have meh, longest trick seven days during COVID lockdown, and then bad just 11, and the longest trick lasted in two days. And not for the weekdays. We can see here that usually I'm feeling rad on Saturday. So apparently it's a very good day. And these are the activities that are more common in these kind of days, in rad days, and of course the percentage. So we have that friends. Friends appear more in the rad days, with around 35%, followed by aerial exploring, good meal, and photography. But we have others, like Pokemon conference. So today I'm going to feel rad. I mean, I'm feeling very rad right now. And then we have like Formula One, which is freaking cool, right? <laughs> now, the same thing, but like with good. Here, the distribution is quite normal. There's nothing that spectacular. I mean, I guess Mondays are good. So people like to complain about Mondays. For me, they're just fine another day. I mean, it's the beginning of a new week, new things, new events, right? Like traveling to Argentina. And the activities, these activities are more these are the activities that are more common in good days. And there's a huge interesting fact here is that these activities, they are more like activities I do on my own, like gaming, writing, coding, watching Netflix, or reading, while the ones that are at are more social things, like friends, exploring, good meal, photography. 
So I feel like that was some quite nice highlight. Then, do, 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 what else? This is meh. And we can see that meh, it does not happen on Saturday and Sunday because there's nothing bad about Sunday besides Formula One and baking. And these are the activities from the meh day, sick, fucking Mac, and travel. Oh God, it feels good to say that, yeah. And then we have bad, of course, there's nothing bad about Thursday. This is bad, bunny, Puerto Rican day. And then Sunday. Uh, First of bad day that had this activity. Well, here you have them. Final words. I'm a happy human. I love my friends. Pokemon watching Formula One. Exploding and photography is a perfect combination. I don't like flying or napping. Then, of course, baking on Sunday makes me happy. And looking bad at this data makes me all fuzzy, you know, and sentimental because it's nice, you know, to go back and look at all those moments and see the good things, the bad things. So thanks to the data and, of course, thanks to all of you. Yeah. Yeah, 25 Pokemon cars. Yeah. <laughs> I believe we have like one minute for question. That took way longer. But yeah. We have a few minutes for A few, yes. Here. This was the last one, by the way. <laughs> so, so thank you for um, being very vulnerable with Thanks. data and showing. I wouldn't have shown people that my mood and how much like in my pooping and stuff yeah. <laughs> um, but I appreciate that um, this is be a bit of a nerdy question I'm wondering if you try to impute which days that you didn't log data using any of the data around it so you said that there is 319 missing data points so can you have used some kind of an imputation method to say and it is also added to my second a second question Maybe you did have awful days, but maybe there's some bias in not logging those. Good one. Yeah, it, to be honest, I did the first awful three weeks, three months ago, because something very weird happened, and I was like, God, I'm actually, what is this feeling? And I get that's the awful feeling. As for this first one, honestly, no, I didn't, I didn't work forward, to, I didn't investigate more of those days where I didn't log any sort of activities, because for me, it's not that important. It means just that there wasn't any highlight on that day. However, there's always, I'm always, always logging the mood. That's something that I always do. And I'm still doing it today. It's been already like maybe like five years. And my plan is to keep doing it until, I don't know, the app stops working. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are you worried anyway about being tracked? So you had an app uh, and Side Being question. tracked? No, yeah. I'm not worried. Everybody tell me, dude, you are crazy. Like, uh, my room is full of sensors. I like tracking things. I'm a data nerd. It's awful. It's a weird obsession, you know. Like, right now I have like, like tracking how much time. It's 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 weird. So, I don't know. Like, I don't really care. And I mean, it's of course when I publish all these things, I change the names, you know. Like Ariel, that's not her name, you know. And and something just to make, you know, just to put an extra effort. But like right now, I don't really. I mean, Google is tracking me, so I guess I just use that data for something else that is better, <laughs> right? I mean, they're making money, so at least I can make you guys laugh. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. We're now at time. Let's switch it out.